Hey everyone, it's Boogeyman Ben. Hope everyone's doing well and everyone had a nice day. Um, I know I'm a little early with this video. Um, I initially said uh, in the video I did last night that my first new video this week would be Comic Book Wednesday for tomorrow. Um, but I have so many things that I wanted to talk about and start getting uh, my videos rolling out again that I thought I'd start um, tonight with um, talking about some new horror films that I saw. One in the theater, one in video on demand. <clears throat> and also some new DVD Blu-rays that I've picked up that I thought I'd share with everyone. So I um, hope everyone enjoys this video and please stay tuned. So the first DVD I want to talk about that I picked up is Hatchet 3. Um, big fan of the Hatchet film series. I own the first two films and Hatchet 3 I actually watched back in June because um, it was a video on demand so I was able to watch it while it was in limited release in theaters. <coughs> and uh, I watched it then and I was kind of in the middle of uh, We were actually leaving for a trip so I was kind of watching it before we left for the trip so I didn't really get to get into it as much as I wanted to. I still enjoyed it, but uh, tonight I watched it again for the second time, and this movie is a fucking blast. If you like over-the-top gore, and if you're a fan of Adam Green, um, Adam Green wrote and produced this movie. Um, he did not direct uh, Hatchet 3. B.J. McDonnell actually directed this one, um, but you have a great cast. You have uh, Zach Galligan from Gremlins is in this. You have, uh, you have Kane Hodder uh, reprising his role as Victor Crowley. You have uh, Daniel Harris as Mary Beth. Um, you have a great cast of characters. Um, it's such a fun film. Um, and I'm going to say it's probably my favorite of the Hatchet films. Um, this movie is easily a 10 for me. I just really had a blast watching this film. Um, and I like all three films. And I think this one is going to have, I'm going to have to say this one is my favorite. And also the other awesome part of this movie is Derek Mears is actually in this movie. And uh, to see two guys that have played Jason go head to head in this movie is worth the price. So if you um, are a fan of the first two Hatchets, I definitely recommend picking this one up or at least checking it out. Um, a lot of fun. So completely worth it. Love Hatchet 3. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is that I did see The Conjuring. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do a, a video like I, you know, a review like I uh, have done in the past for like The Purge and Evil Dead and Texas Chainsaw. But I did see The Conjuring a couple weeks ago and fucking loved it. It was one of the scariest films I've seen in a long time. Loved James Wan. Uh, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga did a tremendous job. Um, the, the story is just so creepy and I don't want to ruin anything for people who haven't seen the film but all I can say is that with the amount of money that it's brought in at the box I was I think it's made 120 million already and it only costs like 20 million to make or something like that I mean that's just great and I'm so happy to hear that uh, they're gonna be doing a sequel because I think they, that we it would be neat to see um, the Warrens and some of the other um, ghostly encounters that they had in their life. I mean, it's just the, the whole movie is just completely creepy. I love James Wan so much. I'm so looking forward to Insidious 2. But yeah, The Conjuring was just such a scary film. Um, everybody in the film just did a tremendous job. Um, and just some of the settings and the way that he used suspense and, and slow building suspense. It wasn't a lot of quick cuts and jump scares and things like that, even though I don't mind those. It was just such a fun film and it scared the bejesus out of me and my wife and uh, we loved it and that's again a 10 out of 10 loved The Conjuring. It's probably my favorite horror film this year um, and uh, I can't wait to see it again and I can't wait to pick it up on Blu-ray and DVD when it comes out. So if you haven't seen it, run out and see The Conjuring. Amazing, amazing film. Now the other film that I saw recently, and I have my phone with me just to make sure I get the names right, um, I saw the remake of the movie Maniac, uh, which was an 80's film. Um, I saw the original once uh, on a reference from a friend who told me to check it out. And it was good, it was a good film, it was very, you know, disturbing film, and I knew that um, this new one was going to be just as disturbing, if not more so. Um, but the film stars Elijah Wood, it was actually written by Alexander Aja. Um, who's done some of the most disturbing horror films of recent memory. Um, he did the remake of Hills of Eyes, he did the remake of Piranha, he did High Tension, um, Mirrors was another one he did, which I really enjoyed. Um, and it was directed by Frank Calfon? Sorry if I'm saying this name wrong. Um, but it's it's such a creepy movie, and it's just about this, this, this maniac who stalks women 
and he ends up falling for this young artist and he has like all these mannequins and he's kind of like she wants to use them for this art exhibit and things like i mean i don't want to talk about it too much because it's really a movie you have to sort of watch without knowing anything but what was so creepy about the film is that it's all from the killer's point of view everything is from his point of view so like you are stalking the women as it's like you're you're the you're the killer and it's just so creepy and it's such an amazing direction i thought my wife wasn't a big fan of it at all but i really appreciated the way it was done it is tremendously disturbing it is tremendously gory it's not a film you want to watch um many times over but for some reason my wife who has liked uh, certain horror films that I don't, that really disturb me. Like, she really liked Last House on the Left, which bothers the hell out of me because I don't like rape scenes. They bother me. Um, and then, like, I Spit on Your Grave and those ones. Even though I think she liked them because they had more of a revenge angle towards them, you know, where someone is wronged or hurt or something has happened to them, you know, causing tremendous harm on them, and then they get revenge on the people that do that. That's where she likes those films. I just don't like, they just, they're, they're not my favorite kind of films, but this one was just so interestingly done and i recommend people checking it out it is on if you have comcast it's on video on demand right now it's about 6.99 to call it up but it was it was a movie that really stayed with me after i watched it, and i'm still thinking about it today so check it out it's the remake of maniac starring elijah wood check it out i mean he really does a great job of playing a really good creep in this film so go ahead and check that one out i'd give it about an i'd give it about a nine and a half out of ten very good movie very interesting very disturbing Now this is the shameful part of this um, video because I mentioned it in the video I did yesterday that I purchased a DVD, Blu-ray, mind you, of a film that I said I would never buy and I would never have in my collection. And that film is, drumroll, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Now before everybody kills me, um, I think that, I mean, if I'm going to... I'm going to show this clip right now of a video I did in 2011 saying why I would never buy this film, so or never have it in my collection, so check this out. So Halloween 3, um, a lot of people say, you know, Halloween 3 isn't a bad film, it just was unlucky to have the Halloween name and had nothing to do with Michael Myers, but I did not like that film. I do not consider it a part of the Halloween mythology for me. Um, I don't own it. I never plan on owning it. And after seeing it, I just really don't want to see it again. Now, I think that came from seeing this film when I was a kid. Now, as a child, as a teenager, I loved Michael Myers. I still do. Big Michael Myers fan. Love the series. One of my, it's in my top five of favorite horror film series ever. But I was very disappointed like many Halloween purists, that the third film was not about Michael Myers and was instead about this man that wanted to kill all the children of the world with these masks that had these little things in them that would cause all these bugs and things to come out of their mouths when they watched this thing on Halloween night. And then I started thinking about it because I started watching a few things on YouTube where people were talking about the film and how much they loved it and that it got such a bad rap because of not having Michael Myers in it, that I decided, you know, maybe I'm one of those people. Maybe I need to give the film a second chance. And I bitch about people not giving films second chances, so I'm like, I'm a hypocrite if I don't at least try it. So I gave the film a second chance, I watched it, and I really enjoyed it the second time. Actually, it was probably the third time I'd watched it. The first time I watched it, I was really young and I didn't like it. Then I watched it again as a teenager. I rented it from the warehouse on tape, still didn't like it very much but you know it was it was okay but i really enjoyed this film i don't like it as much as the other halloweens i love the michael myers storyline but this is a fun film and you know you have a great cast in it tom atkins of course i can't say anything, enough good things about tom atkins i just love him as an actor but you know the direction by tommy lee wallace um you know you have the cinematography the director of photography dane cundy on this so a lot of the people that worked on halloween 2 worked on this um you even have um uh, Dick Warlock in this film, who played Michael Myers in Halloween too. I mean, there's some great people in this, and the story is very creepy, about this man that wants to kill all the children of the world. I mean, what a creepy concept. And I just really enjoyed it, watching it, 
again and my wife liked it and we even you know watched all the special features the, this has the horrors hollow ground it's got a documentary called standalone the making of halloween 3 which is really excellent and it talks about all the heart that went into this and how the film failed and how people hated it when it came out and everything and it's the lowest grossing halloween film so it's it's kind of you know it's like it's almost like an underdog film and so I gave it a second chance, and I really liked it, or a third chance, and I so, really yeah, I mean, enjoyed the film. You know, everybody needs to give things a second chance sometimes, so I learned the hard way. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I picked it up. Glad I own it. So, yeah, I was, I was really surprised at how much I liked this film. So, excellent, excellent film. Had a fun time watching it. If I had to give it a rating, I'd give it a 8.5 out of 10. Still not my favorite out of the original, out of the other Halloween films. I really like the Michael Myers storyline, but this is a fun film to watch, and I look forward to watching it again and having it playing on Halloween. So I wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video. Um, I got some really interesting videos coming up this week, beginning with tomorrow's uh, Comic, Book Wednesday, Comic Book Wednesday, where I talk about uh, meeting Stan Lee. And um, I hope everyone has a great evening. And please feel free to share your thoughts on the videos I talked about or the movies I talked about in the comments below. So look forward to hearing back from everybody. And thanks a lot for watching. Have a good evening.